Hi, my name is Michael Hackenberger. I'm director of Bowmanville Zoo. And last week we had a uh, plant from PETA come and film uh, our, some of our activities with, um, with Uno the tiger. And we would like to present our side. We feel that uh, the uh, images captured are misrepresented by uh, um, uh, PETA, and I would go so f uh, far as to say they're lying. So the first sequence up is where I'm viciously whipping the tiger. And um, there we go. Come on. Okay, so we're in the, as you can see, we're in the same arena. And Madison's working with the tiger. I'll just let this play through. Okay, we'll just stop that there. So that was the first sequence. Um, my uh, my uh, language is atrocious, and I apologize for that. You'll see this. Uh, I, unfortunately, I'm, I have bad language. I'm not proud of it. I've had problems with this in the past, but at the end of the game, at the game, it's, uh, it's bad language. A more important issue, and a far more uh, important issue, is the issue of abuse that we can see from this tape on first uh, look, look see. The tiger, when we were coming around, was coming up and he tried to jump on the ring curb. And he, he knows he's not supposed to do that. It's when I got involved and where I got frustrated and he heard the swearing. Now, he came around, he ran through here and ran th through the pedestals. And then here, because he was facing the wrong way, I did, I got him twice there. But then after that, every uh, blow or every whip of the, of, the, of the whip you see, I do not strike the animal. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So here we have Uno. And here's Madison with her face not uh, lined out as it was in that one. Um, today we have Chris as our backup. We always have a backup when we're working a big cat. And he has a catch-up rope, a uh, shepherd's crook, another meat stick. And he, we do have pepper stray. Uh, we've never used it. So in any case, so here we have the whip. Piece of meat. Okay, so now we whip at it. If I had been striking this tiger during that sequence, this tiger would not be laying there. For too long, we have allowed PETA to interpret the an actions of animals for us. We're not going to do that today. We're going to let the animal tell the story. And the story that this animal is telling us right now, by me standing here with this whip, ready for the net, is exactly the same whip that I used on the day, is that I did not strike this animal. We're going to go back and we're going to look at this videotape again, and you will see that I do not strike him. I strike the ground beside him. And then watch for the release. What, what um, gets the tiger moving is Madison's auditory command. Let's review this tape. Okay, so now we come around. And then he tries to get on the ring curb, doesn't, you know, not, he knows he's not supposed to do that. He comes around. I do twice, I get him around, and then all this is on the ground. You can see I'm not hitting the animal, he's not responding. There. What he responded to was the verbal command of Madison. Uno hop. That means get up and get moving. A tiger will not lay on the ground and allow itself to be struck, as this videotape suggests. They'll turn around and they'll try to kill you. That's not what we're about. Again, just to illustrate, tiger's laying here. It's all good. I walk up. I give him a pat. Okay? And we start with the noise. He's looking at it. 
He's interested in it. What is it? This is not a tiger that was struck. And that's the important point. So maybe I viciously whip the ground. Maybe I viciously whip the air. But I did not viciously whip that tiger. PETA, once again, is lying. My bad language? Foul. Horrible. I didn't strike the tiger, except twice to get him turned around. Let's review the next piece of tape. And I should add that th that was the most damning piece of, uh, of evidence that we had. The other point I'm going to raise now is that this tape will not be turned off for the entire period that we assess what we're about to look at. If it takes uh, an hour and a half, it takes an hour and a half. If it takes 20 minutes, it takes 20 minutes. The tape, uh, the segments, and there's around seven of them, which total a total of three minutes, were cut out of at least an hour and a half of footage that we know was filmed by the PETA plant. Why aren't they showing that? So three minutes out of 90, you're not seeing. I won't do that. I'm going to tell the truth. I won't turn off this camera. And I challenge PETA to release the other footage that they haven't uh, put up. I think you'll s uh, see a story very different than the one that PETA wants to uh, tell you. Okay, so the next one. So he's prepared okay. to go to more trouble, you know, to not do it. And that's why I got on him as hard as I did. Okay, you want to fucking go on the ring curve? <laughs> okay. The single most important uh, ingredient when, we're, when you're trying to get compliance from an animal, human, tiger, amoeba earthworm, is tenacity. Every parent has had to deal with a child screaming in a uh, supermarket. Every child, a parent has dealt with a child who wants to cross against a red light. It's tenacity. He's not allowed to go on that ring curve. If he does, a whole bunch of bad uh, downfalls can uh, happen. But he cannot be cognitively aware of it, which we are. I'm angry in that. Because this animal knows better. It's like your child goes shoplifting and you've tried to raise them right. What are you doing? And again, foul language. I offer no excuses for that. Okay, in case uh, you can't see it because of the low light, I did this. Because that's what the tiger was doing to me. When you l uh, work with large, dangerous predators, they can't defy you. It's just not in the lexicon, because if they defy you, they will ultimately hurt you. By working with these animals, it's not about the behaviors in the ring. It's not about the entertainment value. By bringing these animals out, we're able to expand their minds. We're able to expand their environments. And that ultimately is the most important thing that we can do for the enrichment of these animals in a captive environment. The biggest problems we have in captivity are bored, obese animals. This animal is not bored, and he is not obese. This is an engaged animal. Look at him. He's looking. He's watching. I take the whip out. OK? What does he do? He's interested in it. And look at that. He's playing with it like a, uh, any house cat would. There we go. OK? He's just a big cat. But he's a big cat who can hurt you. So we can't have them. So we take care of the little things. And the little things is his, him trying to avoid a jump by jumping on a ring curve. You can see I take it personally, just like you would if your kids did this to you. It's not allowed. Okay, now in this sequence, I do strike him. Okay, I strike his fight for front paws. Madison was working with him on the uh, pedestal right here. Last fall, we got a message. We got a message loud and clear. And that message was that prior to 1987, I worked a number of tigers, and two of them in fights had knocked their eyes out with their claws. 
When I acquired Bowmanville Zoo in 1987, I made a promise that none of my tigers would be blinded by another cat. So we took the claws out. We did it under veterinarian uh, supervision, we did it under anesthesia, and we did it with high levels of pain management. Society has changed, and that's no longer acceptable. And we got that message loud and clear. So as of last year, we no longer declaw our, uh, our big cats. What that means, though, is it increases the potential danger to us when we're working with these animals. What, uh, when we review the tape again, you'll see that he actually reaches out to, um, you know, to take a swipe at Madison. That's dangerous. We correct that kind of behavior. Let's watch. Okay, I just have to rewind this a bit, excuse me. I'm not very good at this. There we go, I should do it. Come on. Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. There we go. Okay, it says it's going to play. Sorry about this, folks. But again, as I told you earlier, I am not going to turn off this camera so that you see everything. Okay, give it a boo. So I apologize, folks. I have no idea what the problem is. We have Eric on the camera, hard at work with it. Here, I'm going to take you that. Hold that yeah, uh, while okay, I so Eric, you uh, do my thing. You figure out what's going on. So this, um, this image is coming directly from the uh, PETA site, as you can see, and, uh, and why it's not playing, I have no idea. So it looks like we're going to get out of it and, re and reboot it. Okay, there we go. Okay. To here, I think. Oh, it's got to... Okay, do we have to go through the whole thing yes, again? Yes, because it has to stream from the beginning. Okay, so it has to stream from the beginning. Okay, thanks, Eric. Okay, so again, um, to review then, to take this opportunity, um, again, Tiger comes through. I do, twice there, he turns around, and after that, I am not striking the, uh, 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 striking the animal. It's exactly what you saw earlier over there. There you go, the audio command, and up he goes. And I come around, and there we go. Good. And this is where we talk, spoke about the defiance, and where we, um, and where working a large, uh, dangerous predator like this, you just can't have that. And again, here it is again. We're talking about the defy and why it doesn't work. And again, profound language for which I apologize to the viewers at this time. Okay, and here we go. One pause up, and there he goes. Right there is where he tried to strike at, um, at Madison. Um, did he get you? No, he can't. These animals are equipped with claws now. I respect that. The world has changed. We don't do claw cats anymore. But we do have to then allow, uh, allow for the, um, the fact that they're, they're not allowed to claws. Okay, and as you can see, an animal who's very comfortable, an animal who's at peace with us, an animal who, like, if I, I, I'll even bring a whip up. Give me a funny face. <laughs> okay? Okay. This is not an animal that was struck by me. If he was, he wouldn't be doing this. This is an animal who's completely comfortable. Okay, let's review a few more of these segments. Hopefully we won't have to go through that song and dance again. Looks like we're, there we go. Smell that? Good boy. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he expressed his, uh, he had some anal leakage. It actually turned out that if you look at our log books, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had a touch of diarrhea that day. Okay, so in this one, there you go. And again, he comes around. He stops. And again, I'm frustrated, so I swear, and he jumps and immediately gets a piece of meat as a reward, which you don't see. Okay? And let's actually just go through, let's go through that sequence now. Um, now, if you look at Madison's rear end, <laughs> there's a meat pouch there. That's how we train. The acquisition of knowledge is always done through positive um, incentive-based training. Okay, Pam? Okay. So you're getting a, a nice high um, uh, drive. He was just fed just three hours and he's ready to go again. So why don't you put a piece of meat on the end of the meat, just uh, turn around, and we'll, we'll do a jump. Okay? And again, he may, uh, this isn't rehearsed, he may ball cat it and we may have all sorts of problems. Imagine why don't you turn him away from the camera? So the one is on the other side. Okay, it <laughs> doesn't seem to matter. Okay, anytime. So we turn him in a circle. Okay, he follows the uh, meat stick like a target stick. Up, up, and there we go. Okay? The good boy becomes a conditioned reinforcer. Good boy meaning you're going to get an unconditioned reinforcer, which is a piece of meat. Unconditioned means it is not lear a learned response. Um, they, he doesn't have to learn how to like meat, but he has to learn good boy and what good boy means. And again, you can see another piece of meat by way of reward or incentive-based training. Okay? And if you'll also notice, he's not trying to claw um, Madison. Excellent. Okay, so that's how we train it. We ran into a point where he said, if we're going to take this animal out of the cage, we have to do it safely. And as such, we have a backup. We have a number of people. But ultimately, it's your mandate on the animal. It is your, um, your control, for lack of a better word. It's the compliance that the animal provides to you. Mammals are uniquely adept at this. Uh, they, um, you know, uh, now tigers are not a social being, but you still see small groups, um, uh, mothers uh, with sub-adult, uh, young, etc. So they, they interact on this level in a social milieu. So us, we're just other tigers. Are we the dominant tigers? Yes. But there's a difference between domination and authority. What we look to practice here is authority. Don't bite us. Uh, I bring him around and ask him to lay down. Okay, so he comes, brings a piece of meat. Turn him around so that we can get a good shot into the camera. Good. All right, and lay down. Boom, there you go. That's a nice example of authority. Okay, and he receives the incentive of a piece of meat. This is good. It's a, it's a good way to go. Okay, another small piece of meat. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And as you can see, he's engaged, he's looking. He wants to be part of this. We introduce a... a doesn't care. Doesn't care. Okay? So, again, what PETA has done, they've taken a training situation out of context and accused me of viciously whipping a tiger. I think you can see here, I didn't. Now, what I was trying to do was frighten the tiger, absolutely, to get him up. This is, you know, not the nicest thing to look at, but it was ineffective. He didn't move until Madison gave the verbal release, which was? Huh. There we go. He knows it. Take a step back and just say that. All right, you know huh? Boom. There you go. He's a trained animal. Okay, so let's have a look at this. At the, now, did we do the jumps? Because I think this is, a, now watch this really carefully. This is really interesting. Oh, oh no, we don't want to be here yet. So, we'll get to this part. Uh, I'm in, okay, good. Okay. So, okay, so we're, yeah, so we, and again, so I just go, 
puts his head over, and now she's holding out the meat again. Now he balks. He doesn't want to jump. Now watch this, though. She's tugging. Listen to what I say. Okay. I was saying loose leash, loose leash, loose leash. If you try to drag them, that is counterproductive. That is not good animal training. I'm just going to do that again because it's very, it's, it's very significant. Okay. Now watch. Leash goes tight. Boom. As soon as she loosens, loosens the leash, he jumps. And the point of that is that... Again, Peter would have you believe that it's all about beating and it's all about uh, pulling and yanking and doing. It's not. It's not. It's a, less is more. It's about a gentle application of stimulus. Now, this was a, you know, this was a vigorous one, absolutely, because when he's on his back, he's not, you know, that's part of his defy. And I think we've all seen uh, our dogs and cats at home do that. I'm not going to do it. And if we're going to work with him, if we're going to give him a better life by taking him outside of uh, uh, his cages, we need to have the compliance from the animal. We need authority with the animal. Okay, so I think we've gone through this fairly well. Uh, again, doesn't care. Okay, and but, and the cat. And again, I'm sure you, and again, if he was frightened about it with this whip, there's no way that he'd be uh, trying to paw. And I'm sure everyone uh, at some time or other out there has pay, played with their house cat with a piece of twine. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same uh, activity. Okay, so now we're going to change the, uh, the segments that we have up here. We're going to go look at, uh, we were out in the wild wood. We had gone, finished the, um, we had finished the uh, exercise, and so we took him out in the wild wood, to have a um, to have a little um, R and R, if you will, and I was talking to the uh, PETA um, uh, uh, plant. Um, uh, she had uh, portrayed herself as an animal behaviorist who had done a master's, um, and I had assumed that this was a person who was interested in the uh, in the training process. She wasn't. She was just interested in furthering her her own agenda. So let's let's look at that stuff. Okay, well, just go through this. Um, and again, a piece of meat. Uh, and we've reviewed this, but uh, okay, there we go. Okay, let's just stop right there. Because um, I like hitting him in the face. That is not true. That was taken from somewhere, and that's something that PETA has created and put in there. I did not say those words. I did not. If you strike a tiger in the face, you end up with a head shy animal. Just like a horse. And you heard in the head shy, they start throwing their heads all over the place. Okay? So let's come up to this animal that I, I allegedly say I like hitting him in the face. Okay? So. We have to let the animals tell the story. We cannot let an animal rights group with an, uh, with an agenda lead the charge. They don't have the knowledge, they don't have the expertise, and frankly, they don't have the heart. They're zealots, and all they want to do is get their perverted, twisted message out there. I, I, I apologize, I, I was, I'm just going to deliver facts here, but you just saw what I did. If I say I like hitting an animal in the face, I indicated to you I've obviously never hit him in the face. So that is manufactured. It's absolutely manufactured. And then I go on to talk about the paws. And this relates back to when he took a swipe at Madison. That's exactly what I said. I don't want to have to constantly prod an animal. This animal needed a correction, and he needed an immediate correction. And so we have to do it as effectively as possible. Any animal trainer worth the, worth the hell of beans will tell you that you need to uh, apply the stimulus for the behavior that you're looking to change within half a second. It also has to be effective. We're talking about 
a potentially life-threatening in, uh, injury if the uh, claws go in the wrong spot. Femoral artery, carotid, stuff like that. So yes, it's effect, it's direct, and yes, it's uh, immediate, and yes, I want it to be as effective as possible because I'm not gonna have people who I'm responsible hurt by a tiger. And you can't blame the tiger. A tiger is being a tiger, and that's okay. And we'll say, well, they should be in the wild. We know that's a fallacy. We know that the wild does not exist for these animals. It's gone. So we're going to have to figure out how to do it in captivity. I don't think tigers should spend their entire life in a cage. I just don't. So what do we do? We train them. We teach the animal to accept authority. You can see here's the uh, result of it. An engaged, happy animal. And the, and the entire time that we've been filming this, and I have no idea how long that's been now, he's been here. 25 minutes? Perfect. Thanks. So 25 minutes. What is he doing? He's rubbing against uh, Madison. A sign of affection. If she was beating him, he wouldn't be affectionate. we got to let the animals tell the story. He's telling us a story now that we need to listen to. Small piece of meat. It works. He's a carnivore. Okay, so let's listen to this some more. It does. It stings. I want it to be effective. But, I, but here's the problem at the end of the day. This is important. If, if, you, if we had been running a, a videotape the whole time we were here, and you did a 45-second um, uh, montage of the times I struck this animal, um, Peter would burn this place to the ground. So it's something you've got to be... Okay, I'm just going to stop it there. We'll deal with the other stuff. Okay, so what I predicted, standing there, unbeknownst to me, to a pita plant, filming this, unbeknownst to me, I've just relayed the situation that I'm having to talk to you about. Indeed, they were taking it, uh, filming it. But again, PETA, I challenge you, release the other hour and a half that's available. They won't, because that shows stories of what we're showing now. Affection, bonding, understanding, Rational behavioral management for the betterment of this animal. When I started out in this game back at the Alberta Game Farm in 1977, the first, started, started, first thing I did was to start taking tigers out of a cage. I took the tigers out of a cage because I like to see them outside of cages, running around, playing and jumping and having a good time. Afterwards, that's when the phones uh, started to ring from producers, from film guys, saying, hey, that's pretty good. We want to film it. That was never my uh, motivation, though. It became an important f source of revenue to keep Bowmanville Zoo going, but my motivation was never the lights, was never the camera. It was doing what's best for these guys. So, again, here he sits. Look at what the tiger is telling you. And I just can't em emphasize that enough. Don't look at these snippets taken out of context. Don't look at the words viciously lashed. Look at what the tiger's telling you. This is a content, happy, compliant animal. OK. So let's go down uh, to the next bit. And you got to do your own work. And I'm a huge believer in doing your own work. We're really lucky here we've got facilities where, where we can do stuff. And, um, and you know, so do your homework. Because if you don't, it's going to be bad. Again, taken out of context, what I'm talking about there is the homework of developing the animal, the homework of understanding the animal, the homework of working with the animal, the homework of opening up worlds for the animal. That's the homework. And when I talk about facilities, I talk about rings that have 18 inches of sawdust so it's soft on their feet. I'm talking about three acres of outside pens so they can run around and play. I talk about a stream where we take them in and let them play. I talk about putting him in and mixing him with a bunch of other large carnivores so he has companionship. You know, he's a tiger. It's not that important to him, but he's got the option. I do not know of an accredited zoo uh, in North America that has more than three tigers together. They just don't exist. He's in with five lions. 
They play, they roll around, they have fun. We add to the quality of his life. And so just to bring him, on up, bring him on up here. So just to go over it again, we've not turned off this camera. It's run the whole time. So whatever, whatever we have done in the last 30 minutes, you've had a chance to see. Not three minutes taken out of an hour and a half, Buddha, Buddha, but its entirety. So again, PETA, I challenge you, release the rest of those tapes. Show the world what you didn't have the courage, the honesty, or the integrity to show. You claim to care about animals? You're being sued by a family for $9 million for euthanizing their dog. Since 1998, you've killed over 25,000 animals. Really? Got to hand it to you, though, Peter. You got balls, and you're hypocrites. Provide this quality of, uh, of, uh, of uh, care for this animal. Give him this quality of life. I dare you to. I challenge you, Peter. Don't tell your lies. Tell the truth. Release the rest of the tapes. I thank everyone for their kind attention. Um, there's going to be a shit storm over this. I know it. But I stand here with my companions, both humans and animals, and we've been doing this a long time. We believe in what we're doing. We have nothing to hide. And um, again, PETA is manipulating the story. And uh, do me a favor. Go ask them to see the other, I don't know how much it is, 45 minutes, hour, that they didn't show. Because trust me, if there's been some, some bad stuff in there, you'd be seeing it. Thank you very much for your time.